There's nothing quite like standing at the King Street entrance to the capital of this great state of Wisconsin. Standing there on a cold winter afternoon, early evening, 50,000 workers, farmers and their supporters from across the state rallying on behalf of basic human rights, knowing that the struggle was overwhelming, knowing everything that we were up against, feeling that we might not make it, not sure that we could build what we needed to build, and then in the distance to hear the sound of bagpipes and to watch marching into the center of that rally, local 311 Wisconsin firefighters led by Malin Mitchell. I gotta apologize. First of all, thanks for having me, Ed. John, it's always good to see you. I feel like we're like uh, brothers from another mother. I should have said, Herman Cain said that about the Coke Bells. I should have said that. <laughs> but I gotta apologize first. I got a uh, somewhat of a uh, frog in my throat. I, I, I have a sore throat. I, I was a little bit sick. I just came back from Orlando, Florida. It's tough. Uh, but I had the opportunity. I can tell you, I would never have this opportunity unless it was for Ed Garvey. And that was to be on a radio talk show and sit down with Cornell West and Tavis Smiley. Wow. I met Cornell the first time at um, Fighting Bout Fest last year. And from that, we've had a somewhat of a relationship. We, I've been able to speak with him and it's been great. So, let's get started. I'm going to actually just try to take five minutes because i got to be in Milwaukee by five o'clock. <laughs> see if we can do that. So, we're, we're, today's February 1st, right? Yeah. And we're embarked on African American History Month. Um, I've had a chance to go all around the state. It's unbelievable. I've been to Monaco, Wisconsin. Green Lake, Hudson, um, Spring Green, Oshkosh, obviously Final Lake, Appleton, Milwaukee, of course, Madison, of course, all over the state, Beloit, Janesville, all over the state. But I got to tell you, when I was invited to go speak up in Monaco, Wisconsin, not only speak, which is somewhat normal, but to speak about Martin Luther King Jr. in Monaco, Wisconsin, was somewhat of a surprise to me. But I think it was outstanding. I think we got to sometimes sit back and recognize where we are. That's where we used to be. Because we always sit and complain about where we're not, or where we're not going, but we've made a lot of strides in the past decades. So let's talk about that. So I'm in a bar, believe it or not. I'm a firefighter. <laughs> I mean, I'm actually at the Avenue Bar on the north side of Wisconsin. We have a, uh, or north side of Madison. And we had a, um, a, a, a retirement party for a person that's from Merrill, Wisconsin. Actually, I want to speak up there too. He's from Merrill, Wisconsin. He's on a job for 40 some years. Started in Merrill, came down to Madison, he's a chief. And I was sitting there and I, my, a couple of uh, guys said, hey man, where are you going next? Where are you going to speak next? I said, well, actually I'm going to Spring Green, I'm going to Green Lake, and I'm going to Monaco. And they said, well, there's none of you up in Monaco. <laughs> I said, what do you mean none of me? I said, black people? He said, no, Democrats. <laughs> That there were Democrats in Monaco. There weren't black people. <laughs> but there were Democrats. I actually went to speak in Washington County, too, in West Bend, which is the reddest county that we have in our state, I believe. And there are Democrats up there as well. There's still no black people. <laughs> but anyway, let's get at it. We live in a time right now where decent American values are being trumped by political interest. We live in a time where. Bad politicians are being put in office by good people who don't vote. We live in a time where you can run for the President of the United States, the highest office in the land, most powerful person in the world, with a plan like 999, <laughs> and be taken seriously. It sounds like a damn pizza special. <laughs> I'm sorry for cursing, but a revolution is not always PG. We live in a time where you can take a call from who you thought was one of the Koch brothers. <laughs> but you can't take a call from a constituent. We live in a time where you can run for governor and say that help is on the way. We need shared sacrifice. The state is broke. We have a $3.6 billion deficit that we can't keep kicking down the road. 
We got to take care of our kids. We can't worry about elections. We got to worry about right now. Shared sacrifice. Well, let's talk about what happened in January 2011. I don't got to go with you because this crowd is pretty educated. I know. I talk at Fighting Bob Fest, and I know they know. You guys know what we're talking about. But January 2011, state is broke. Shared sacrifice. What did he give? Governor Walker gave tax breaks. Brought back the Las Vegas loophole to the top one percent of wealthy Wisconsinites in our state. You bring your business into the state of Wisconsin from Iowa, Illinois. No taxes paid from any corporation for two years. Two years, free income. Make all the money you want here in the state of Wisconsin. Pay no taxes back to society for two years. But our state is broke, and we need to share a sacrifice. They told us it would cost $7.5 million to clean the capital. I guess that's from the painter's tape on the marble. I guess that doesn't work so well. And we need to share a sacrifice, and our state is broke. So shared sacrifice. So then February comes. February 11th, 2011. Budget repair bill. $3.6 billion deficit. Workers' rights taken away. Union rights taken away. Because we can't afford it anymore. We can't afford these over-exaggerated union rights. They shouldn't have the right to sit back and collectively bargain. Talk about hours, wages, and working conditions. As a matter of fact, here in the city of Madison, firefighters over 311 saved City of Madison, over $2 million, $4 million actually over two years by just making concessions, by coming to the bargaining table. But, but that can't work any longer because unions cost too much money. Our state is broke. We need to share a sacrifice. Right now it seems like we sacrifice and they share the wall. So then Act 32 comes, the big budget. So it wasn't enough just to take away workers' rights. And union rights, no, no, we're not done yet. No, that's not what Coke Brothers said. That's not what Alex said. We got more to do here in our state. 12,000 women that used to go to Planned Parenthood, not for the woman's right to choose, mind you, but just for basic health care because they can afford the health care of their employer. Cervical screening cancer. 12,000 women, funding cut. 30% cut from tech colleges right in our state, but they think education is important. And our state is broke, we need shared sacrifice. Over $1.6 billion from public education taken away. A city like this, uh, the city of Milwaukee has $84.6 billion a year taken away from public education. Now, if there's, whether you like Milwaukee or not, if there's any city in our state that needs education and great public education, great schools, it's the city of Milwaukee. We all need that. Well, that's been taken away. Child labor law weekend. We don't talk a lot about this. If you're under the age of 18 years old, you can work more hours and more days per week in our state. But our state is broke, and we need shared sacrifice. Voter ID, voter registration, which I like to call voter suppression. Yes. Yes. Back in, you know, I know we're in Black History Month, and we talk about Martin Luther King. We all know that Martin Luther King talks about not just civil rights, but union rights. Matter of fact, in 1968, April, in April of 1968, he was there to march with the Memphis sanitation workers, an ASME local, which ASME started right here in Wisconsin, by the way, by 1936. But he was down there to march, march with the Memphis sanitation workers because of the implorable conditions that they had to endure. But he was assassinated during that. The day, the day before that, he gave us a top of the mountain speech, which is one of my favorite speeches of all time. Our state is broke, and we need to share a sacrifice. Voter ID. The John Birch Society back in Martin Luther King's day are the same modern Koch brothers that we have right now. Yes. The same people. Just a different suit. And maybe not double breasted, maybe just single breasted now. <laughs> but it's sickening. It's implorable. It's bringing back the Crow Law, Jim Crow Laws. So when the administration came to us, and told us that firefighters, police officers, you are exempt. You can stay on an island by yourself. We don't need you to come out and protest. We don't want you to be there. And it's going to be about two weeks. We were told it was going to be two weeks. Two weeks of people being upset. And it'll be two weeks of people being angry. And after the two weeks, people will go home and realize that the sky has not fallen. Our Legislative Fiscal Bureau has estimated that over the next 10 years, $2.3 billion of massive tax cuts to corporations and the wealth in our state, $2.3 billion. But they told us, firefighters, police officers, that we need to, we're exempt and we can be on an island by ourselves. Well, we not only told them no, but we told them hell no. And we're not going to sit out and do that. 
And, 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 and the reason why... And the reason why... You don't have anything, do you? <laughs> Side of justice and the right side of history, solidarity, brothers and sisters. 